I find that a lot of people who start their very own vending machine business are not budgeting properly in the beginning. Therefore, in the end, they are not happy with the results that they get from what they started. So I want to extrapolate or expand on kind of this point a little bit more in this video. And I think there's basically five pillars to budgeting for your vending machine business that are very important when you're starting because you need to understand that, you know, the amount of money that you have to start your vending business and it may just be a crumpled one dollar bill you need to budget it and forecast it and understand that costs arise machine costs are there leasing is there renting a space is there paying a commission is there having an llc paying taxes all of this stuff is here it is not just find a machine that's the worst cheapest on facebook and put it out there and think you're going to make a thousand dollars a month usually that's never the case i have never seen someone buy the worst oldest vending machine put it on a location and make a thousand dollars a month i've never seen it if you're gonna do it please comment on this video reach out to me because i want to come interview you i think that's the coolest thing ever if you could find a crappy vending machine on facebook marketplace and put it out there and make a thousand dollars a month and have no issues and no headaches i want to be your friend and i want to grow a vending business with you because usually you're never going to do that and honestly i just don't see it happening but one of the first things to consider when budgeting for this business is obviously the machine itself and i won't spend a lot of time on this because we all know the cost of the machine is the main cost of this business but there are also time costs as well and product costs as well. But as for the machine, there's a variety of machines you could start with. You know, the variety starts from honor boxes, which I'm not gonna pitch in this video. The second is bulk vending machines. The next is mini cranes. Then you got your full size cranes. Then you got your soda machines, snack machines, combination machines, coffee machines, ice cream machines, and the list goes on and on and on. But those machines are kind of where you start. You have to pick from this list. And let's say we're gonna start with soda and snack vending machines. Then you have to budget accordingly knowing how you want to end. There was someone when I got into business who always told me, and I think it was my father, is start how you want to finish. And I think it's one of the most important things that a lot of people don't do when growing a vending business or any business. If you start a vending business and you grow it slow or you know you don't really know what you're doing and you're just doing it to try to see if you can get out there, that's not going to be successful for you in the long term. In the long term, the best way to do it is to start how you want to finish. Start the vending business how you want to finish. You want to make $250,000 in two years, three years with your vending business, then start that way. Start with the fact that this business is going to make you a quarter of a million dollars a year, because if you don't do that, you'll never go up to that number. You'll never push the limits of what you can do. So budget for the machine, maybe $4,000, maybe $3,000. In addition to the cost of the vending machine, of course, you need to budget for your inventory costs. And I think that's kind of where a lot of people get lost because they don't understand like, hey, if you buy a product for 50 cents, and you sell it for a dollar, your margin's not 100%, it's maybe 40%. You know, it depends. There's a calculation for for it. I could kind of go over that, but I'm not going to go over that at all. If you want to know how to calculate your profit margin out as a percentage, type it into Google and you can get that number. Very simple stuff. If you want me to go over profit margin, net profit, gross profit in this industry, snack by snack, drink by drink, let me know in the comments below. I'll do another video on that. But getting back to your machine, your inventory costs and your maintenance costs, you need to budget another few hundred dollars to fill that machine. And you're in now for like two, three, four thousand dollars with inventory, probably more if you started new and you listen to Dom on the internet, which most people probably won't, but that's okay. So now you have your inventory. That inventory now has to churn out. Now you have to have a churn rate, meaning for every SKU you have in there out of your 30, 40 selections, those need to churn on an average basis. So every single week when you go there, you're making money on each row. You know, if something's not selling in a row, that means you're losing money because someone's not buying that row and you could be stocking it with something else that maybe that customer base would like better. So it's not just about budgeting for the machine and the product. It's also budgeting and understanding that some products may work, some products may not. Accounting for that in your inventory and testing different products is super important in the beginning and will alleviate some of that stress later on when you're wondering why things aren't selling. Usually it's because you didn't try enough product and you went super basic on your product base. So I think that's important. And one of the other important things, which we're not going to cover in its entirety in this video, is making sure when you're going to a location that you give them a product and drink list. Like make sure they know like, hey, pick from this list and kind of have a tally of what people are going to pick, see what people are going to like. And then you know what's going to sell at that location because most of the time when people are kind of picking what they want on a list those are things that they're eating on a, on a consistent basis so that you have consistent sales there you know i i once saw though like the average person on a yearly basis really only spends like 50 bucks at vending machines i don't know if that's true but i did think that was interesting one of the other things to consider and it's not the biggest factor when budgeting for your business but is the leasing and you know on a commission standpoint obviously we're not really leasing most spaces for our vending machines unless that's the avenue you're going and you want to be in a 
strip mall or a local mall or an airport and pay them the big buck. But for the most part, we'll do a commission of 10%, 20%. And you know, you're gonna hope that's 50, 100, $150 paid out to them. But still, that's a cost every month that is continuously going. One of my newer accounts that I recently placed, they want a hundred bucks a month. But that machine, it's two machines. Those machines do like 1300 for the last three months. So paying them a hundred dollars is less than 10% of my income. That's not bad when I'm making margins of 60, 70% on the products I'm selling. So it's important to keep that into consideration. You know, if your margins are there, if your percents are there, then go do it and expect to pay that because locations know their value most of the time. And if they don't, then you get a home run there. And one of the other things that I don't see a lot of new vendors do is budgeting for marketing. I think, you know, getting out there, buying a machine, placing it, filling it, paying your commission. Sure, that's great. But after that, what are you going to do? You need more locations. This is a location game. You can't just have one convenience store in this business. You can't just have one vending machine and get rich. It's really not that easy. Um, unless the location has 10, 20 machines on it and it's a huge spot, it's not that easy to just have one vending machine and call it a day and say, okay, now I've made money and I own a business. I don't believe that's true. And I believe the marketing side of it is where a lot of people get lost. You have to continuously put your name out there in your local area, market yourself on Facebook, Instagram, Google ads, newspaper if you want to. However, things are gonna get you out there. Market your vending business like your life depended on it as it usually does because you're on a budget. You're looking at this video because you wanna start the cheapest way or understand the cost and logistics that go into this business. So get yourself out there. After you land your first account, it is so important to hit the gas and to keep locating and to keep marketing and building yourself up because once you have one, now you know how to do a second one and it gets easier for the third, fourth, fifth and 50th and so on. So make sure you're doing appropriate measures when it comes to that. And lastly, I leave it last because I don't think it really is that important when you're just starting as your business makes no money and is mainly costing you money and is quote unquote a hobby. It's considered a hobby by the IRS is legal costs, insurance costs, LLC costs, taxes, a third pretty much of every dollar you make in your vending business if it is an LLC is going back to Uncle Sam. A part of it is going back to sales tax if you have sales tax in your area. And as well, you have to pay to incorporate an LLC. You have to pay yearly to keep those documents updated. If you have big accounts, you need insurance. Insurance is not that expensive on vending machines. Things rarely happen, but you still need it. You need to prove that information to locations so that they can see that you're legit. And I think a lot of people forget about all of these costs or a lot of people get overwhelmed by all of these different legal issues and costs and things that are associated with any business that happens. But if you want to start a business and you want to be successful, business is expensive. That's the truth of it. Most people have jobs because they're not expensive and they pay you. You don't have to worry about anything. In a business, you have to worry about everything and it all comes down to you until you hire your first employee. So depending on how you want to grow, what you want to do with your own vending business, I think there are a large amount of considerations that go into your budget. But I would say this, naming the budgets for each, Honor Box business, budget $500. Bulk vending business, budget $2,000. Mini crane business, budget $5,000. Regular crane business, budget $7,000. Soda business, budget $10,000. Soda and snack business, budget five to 15,000. Combination machines, 8,000. These are your costs. These, this is what it's gonna be with everything included in there. You know, So know what it's gonna cost, know what you have in the bank, know what you're willing to risk. There's always a risk in business. And it goes back to my last video on kind of the locations and where you put your machines will make or break your success and how you feel about this industry. It's so, so true. Just go into this spending less than you think you should because it's gonna cost more than you think it will. And remember that. And on that note, I'm gonna leave you guys, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys here soon for another video. Peace.